Uh, you said at one point, uh, you, I guess for about seven years, you were a detective on the police force. Yes. Instead of a manager. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? Uh, yes, I'm a sergeant now. Um, the detective role was an amazing opportunity for me. I felt like I was able to be directly involved mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. helping people with some very serious issues. Uh, you'd be surprised the uh, the broad mm -hmm. spectrum of, of stuff that we have. We like to think that everything's ideal in our were, little were community. Were you a, uh, a detective at the time of the Lochtefeld case? I was not. I was a patrol officer. I was, mm -hmm. I was pretty new at, mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. I was involved uh, peripherally in that in that yeah. matter. Uh, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, but the reason I mean, that would sort of be the extreme, uh, pretty close to the extreme. End yes, of what the sad to say, are, yeah. um, between uh, uh, after that, we've had two other murders mm -hmm. on Nantucket that I was involved right. with uh, the investigation of. Mm -hmm. Yes, and y y we like to think that everything's wonderful here in our beautiful island community, but unfortunately, that's not always, not always the case. We do have incidents of uh, severe domestic violence. We've had cases, uh, obviously, involving drugs. Um, theft, crimes, uh, and mm -hmm. all these things, you know, end up being investigated at a higher level, and that's where the detectives are able to come in and to focus a lot. Um, mm -hmm. As a patrol officer, it's tough because you are you, there are some built-in limitations. You you still are responsible mm -hmm. for every ongoing call, so you don't have the ability to hyper-focus on on an issue like a detective would, mm -hmm. and so that's why that department is very important in in our overall situation. Was there, was there any single case that you can point to that, that uh, gave you particular satisfaction in sort of getting to the... Definitely. Um, I'm very victim-driven, mm -hmm. and I, I am not the guy that you want for, for details. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm definitely not CSI Nantucket, <laughs> but I was always partnered up with, uh, with very excellent mm -hmm. partners who, who had those talents. So I, I would be more uh, driven by speaking with the, with the mm. victims or interviewing suspects. And yes, there are some cases, although I, I really don't want to get into right. too much, but uh, there are days where I went home and said, you know, I'm very happy that that was closed out the way it is. This, this person who was a victim now has a chance for justice. And that's, that's why we signed up. That's what we're, we show up for. And by the same token, there must have been some frustrations as well. 100%, yes. Yeah. Uh, unsolved cases, uh, it, they... they stay with you. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I, I have uh, probably three that I could name right out of the gate that, uh, that I'm, I'm praying that someday uh, we'll, we'll have a successful resolution mm -hmm. to. Um, I gathered from what you said earlier that you know, the police department part of your career is something you have no regrets about. Oh, I'm the happiest yeah. guy, generally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are good days and bad days no matter what you do. And, mm -hmm. and it's tough because as, as a, a fellow told me once when I was at the police academy, uh, police officers will spend the worst 15 minutes of someone's life with them. And I found that to be a very accurate statement. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 sometimes it hurts. Uh, it's, it's tough to see anybody in pain. Um, it, you know, I had to get past mm -hmm. the uh, the, the feeling that, that really haunted me at times mm -hmm. where you want to just wave the magic wand and make everything better for everybody, but we obviously don't have that ability, so we have to do the next right thing, which is do everything that we can to successfully conclude a case or to help someone through a tragedy mm -hmm. in any way that we can. And that, that's it's an awesome responsibility, mm -hmm. and it's something it's, uh, that... that uh, I don't think people realize the, the burden it places on the individuals who are in these roles either. Yeah, right to our dispatchers. I mean, every, every one of us at that department, yeah. we're, we're, we're good, caring people. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking today with uh, one of our dispatchers who did an amazing job trying to uh, help someone through uh, a, a very bad situation that occurred last week. She was mm -hmm. wonderful on the phone. Mm -hmm. She did everything right. The situation did not have a happy ending. And it hurts her. And mm -hmm. no matter, we, we were talking about how you might know intellectually that there's nothing else that you could do. Knowing it and feeling it are two different mm -hmm. things. And she takes her job very seriously. She's wonderful at what she does. And I, you know, you can tell that that it still bothers her as it still bothers me. I was on the same call. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, those are the things that are tough. And that's why having good outside interests are very important to help balance out some of those things. So, yeah, but there is an element of satisfaction when things do go well, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it. You're also involved in mar martial arts, I believe? I am. I'm a Krav Maga instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, my, 
my favorite day of the week is Saturdays because that's our that's our big kids mm -hmm. day. I work with Jules Embry Pellrine, mm -hmm. who was amazing. Uh, we've had two black belts come through our system. They're Michael Proach and Elizabeth Eldridge. They're both in the high school right now. Mm -hmm. Great kids, uh, people that you'd be proud to have as the public face of your organization. So I, I just think is, the world is that of them. judo in essence, or is it something else? No. Uh, Krav Maga is Israeli based and it was developed by a man named Emi Lichtenfeld who uh, was assigned to put a program together that would work for every man, woman and child in that country. Mm -hmm. And he stole unabashedly from all of the other martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> My background's boxing, and you know the the punching mm -hmm. is is definitely from Western mm -hmm. boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, jiu Jitsu is involved, judo is involved, uh, karate. If it works and it works regardless of size or strength, mm -hmm. then it's in. If it doesn't and something else works better, then the old stuff's out and the new stuff's mm -hmm. in. And that's what I love about it. No, it keeps changing. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, in fact, I trained with. Uh, with a man that literally wrote the book um, for American Krav Maga, and he said, if you have my book, go to page such and such, yeah. tear that section out, because I'm gonna show you what should be in there. We've tested this on, under stress, which is a, a big thing for Krav Maga, mm -hmm. and we found that something else works better. So how the many, old how, stuff's out and the new stuff's in. How many kids are involved in that? Uh, probably 50 yeah, in and out, yeah. It's it's very fun. We, we start them at four years old, mm -hmm. and they're cute, and we, we have a good time with the kids. Uh, um, then all the way to uh, some high school kids, and we do have adult classes as well. Every now and again, we'll offer free women's self-defense classes. It's something that mm -hmm. I feel strong about. I, I was involved with uh, domestic violence cases mm -hmm. and sexual assault cases. Do you team up with a safe place for, on that at all? Um, we we certainly make ourselves available mm -hmm. to uh, to any organization that uh, is interested in protecting women. Mm -hmm. And the Safe Place does a fantastic job on Nantucket in doing that. There's no doubt about it. You're a parent as well. I am. I have two daughters, and uh, my older daughter, Katie, trained with me until she was about 12. She was fantastic, but uh, she just lost interest. And mm -hmm. I always always told myself that I was never going to push my, my mm -hmm. kids into this, and I, I'm hoping that maybe someday she'll How come back. How old is she now? Uh, she's 15. And the younger daughter, Anna, she's evil because she's left-handed. <laughs> we know that that's, <laughs> that's a sign of pure evil. Uh, Anna is... You don't want to leave the audience with that impression. Oh, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I just did a, a defensive tactics instructor course uh, for the police department, mm -hmm. and the main instructor that was teaching us was left-handed, mm -hmm. and it made me crazy because they... The, everything's backwards, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, you know they, they definitely are, are more talented because they can do it both ways. <laughs> so, <laughs> and my frustration comes from boxing. If you ever boxed a lefty, you, you'll know very quickly why that's, that's not a good thing. Your head gets snapped back a lot. What's it like being the parent of a teenager on Nantucket? I do you think, think you have special concerns, or it's just like everywhere else? I think it's like everywhere else. I think that no matter where you are, um, if you put the time in, you're, you'll, you'll reap the rewards. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've watched good people uh, over the years. I, I, I will pick on Tom and Sheila Klinger again. Mm -hmm. They have three wonderful daughters. And uh, Tom never missed a sporting event. Mm -hmm. Sheila never missed a sporting event. They, uh, they did everything they could to be a part of their, their children's lives. And that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. I think that no matter where you are, uh, if you if you pay attention and uh, care about your children, give them room to grow. Mm -hmm. um, but always uh, try to be the guiding hand. You, you're going to reap the benefits of that. And so I, 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 I guess definitely putting your, myself your there. police department hat on, again, you see a lot of cases where that doesn't happen. It's sad, and, it, and it's not an economics thing, mm -hmm. uh, because I'll, I'll see it from uh, both ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, parenting is, is a big deal. Uh, I think there, there was a book written by Barbara Woodhouse, an old English uh, instructor a long time ago mm -hmm. about dogs and she, her thing was no bad dogs and uh, she said they're not bad dogs just bad owners i think that she, i can apply that quite often to children mm -hmm. that uh, that parenting is lacking and uh, that that can become an issue with the child if they don't have that guidance they're looking for that guidance so and it all comes back together it does whether, wherever you are whether in the martial arts or the police department or mm -hmm getting kids scholarship money. Absolutely. So uh, again, the uh, Nantucket Police Charitable Association benefit on March 29th uh, at the Chicken Box. Steve Tavarnish, thank you very much. Thank you. This is going to be a real fun event. I hope everybody will come out. I so. hope so, and too. Thank you for your time. Nice to see you. Thank you, sir. Whip out that harmonica and play a little tune. 
Um, let's, let's see, harmonica is in, I, I need okay, to, wait, no, it's, in, it's in the pocket of my coat. <laughs> it's funny, yeah, we went through a whole batch of uh, names trying to come up with what was going to work, and one of my favorites was Alter Rockers. I thought that was going to be good, <laughs> but uh, Cranberry Alarm Clock you made us all You could have spelled Alter, well. A-T-L-T-E-R. Yes, exactly. Are, yeah. <laughs> we, we could have played with that, but yeah. uh, Cranberry Alarm Clock won. And, uh, who's, who's, no, it's you and Tom? And it's who? Tom Proach. Phil right. Proach is Tom's brother. Those two have played together, obviously obviously, since they were little kids, mm. and they are amazing. So it's the three of you? Uh, no. Uh, we've got Frankie Hunter, who is uh, the guitarist that I was talking about yeah, earlier. Frankie yeah. is amazing. He's uh, pretty much a human jukebox. Mm -hmm. right. you, you can I just call him up uh, you know, on a song, and, and the next thing you know, he's, he's playing it. and it's, it's great stuff. And then Rob Head, who is the right, uh, yeah. art teacher at the elementary school. Right. And Rob plays a slide guitar that could make you cry. It's, it's fantastic. I, well, it sounds good when yeah. I walk by. That's, Maybe I'll knock on the door and come in You need to sometime. come up. It's loud up there. It's a very small space, and uh, everybody's is. got their amps up too high. <laughs> but it's fun. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's hear you. Can we have a little demonstration oh, of your man. ability on I, the harmonica? I, I should have known. <laughs> well, you, guys, you know, come on. Okay, let you, let's see. You've got it in I've, your hand. I've, got, go I've got an A harp here. This is a, a Honer Special 20. Um, let's see. Let's. One song that we're working up is Desire by U2, and it's got this little harmonica riff in it. It goes... It just uh, comes in at the back end of the song, mm -hmm. and it's it's a uh, it's a U2 song that uh, is very guitar driven. Everything that we do is is pretty much guitar driven. Um, this is the wrong key, but uh, some of the Beatles stuff that we do has the harmonica in it, and, and that's fun. Um, my my bandmates are, are huge Beatles fans, and did you it's see that fun. show that was on? Hey, oh yes, I have the tape. It, it, I haven't watched it. Was it was very cool. Yeah. It was very good stuff. Um, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when that happened. Do a Beatles one. Let's see. Um, again, I, I'd be playing a C harp uh, to do that. I don't know how it's going to sound in this. Let's see. What can I do? Not love me. Do. Well, love me do would be. But, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> but we have fun, and like I say, uh, of of the guys that I play with, I'm I'm the least talented. They're being very you kind. Play anything to me. else besides the harmonica? No, no. Yeah. But they've uh, they're saying, hey, make yourself useful. Play the tambourine. Play the cowbell. <laughs> do something. Uh, sing some background vocals, um, and do do a couple of songs here and there. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a learning process. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely a neophyte. Those mm -hmm. guys have been playing for years, and they're very kind to to let me come in and and try not to mess their stuff up. It's amazing the talent we have on this island. We have fun. We have a very <laughs> good time. Great. I hope people will come out and see us. We played at the Sea Dog a couple of weeks ago, and it was amazing. It was mm -hmm. very cool. I didn't tell a soul because I wasn't sure how we were going to do. Mm -hmm. I was confident in my bandmates. I wasn't confident in myself, but it went very well. We were very well received. We're playing there again on March 14th, Friday night. So yeah. come on out. All right. Great.